where we are right now is just stunning and it's just it's great i think we're just going to talk so, <laughs> yes, of course. so just here yeah is that all right nice perfect shooting it raw yes shooting it raw the first photo yeah is okay so it's called secret spot not so secret anymore Hmm. And uh, what we see is, uh, I, okay, this is in Hong Kong, I believe? Yeah. yeah okay, it's in Hong Kong. Uh, so on the bottom left, we have two surfboards, one with a very nice sharp nose and one with a more rounded nose. They're both kind of propped on the ground and there are lots of rocks below, or they're, they're propped against the railing. You can see the rocks and there's a little bit of surf. It's not so big. Was that, was that a good day for surfing? This or? is a good day for Hong Kong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, in the background, I think that's an island. No, but it looks like a, it's Koh Tong. It's Koh Tong. It's just out, yeah, out there about. Okay, okay. About, um, oh, you're right. Is that, there's, is that Sharp Peak? Yeah, yeah, it's sharp so over the back. Yeah. Right, right. So you, just in the, in, the, in the back, it's kind of faded because of the haze. Yeah. Um, the photograph ends up looking quite. Um, because it's overcast, it looks quite monochromatic. So there's not a lot of splash of color. There's a bit of white water, and there's one little, what? I just love that. <laughs> love the description. Okay, of what, sure. Well, yeah, yeah what, just what, have to what, describe what it is. Yeah, you're doing well. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, there's nobody in the water, and there is actually a very nice barrel, I guess you could say. It's more a rolling, just a rolling wave, not quite a barrel. Okay. Some of them were, yeah, it's, it, it's a little bit of a cover-up sort of wave, yeah. Sure, sure. So why why start the conversation with this photo? Well, f for a start, you've lived here for a few years and you're um, guessing at where it is, but it's like right in front of us. It's, it's just around the corner and out about two kilometers. Amazing. Um, and that's what I've really um, found precious in, in this place. And what you're also seeing is sort of one of the best days of the year, even though it doesn't look like Hawaii or anything. Mm -hmm. um, but the most striking thing of that photograph is that there's no one out there. Yeah. If any sort of a wave of that form was anywhere else I've ever lived, there'd be anywhere from 10 to 30 people there. Sure. But here it's empty, it, and that's, again something to be really admired about this place it, it, from from a surface perspective anyway so okay from a surfer's perspective because okay i'm gonna ask you a very loaded question mm -hmm. i asked you what for photography means to you fine what does surfing mean to you a little bit more than photography <laughs> <laughs> um it, it's something i started um, over half a century ago at a place called Bondi Beach and as a little kid on a rubber surf mat or surf plane uh, it's just been something that I've done all my life for as I said half a century um, and I, I say this I love my work as an educator but it's basically what I do to get money to buy those surfboards that are leaning up against the railing there mm -hmm. everything revolves around accessing you know things like that nothing like Hawaii nothing deadly but just something that um, is rolling and nice and slightly empty mm. of people uh, so it means it means a lot it's uh, yeah it's my balance piece it's my sanity piece mm -hmm. it it's, keeps me whole keeps me going well I've met a few people and I understand this idea of calling it aqua therapy a way to offset the hectic life that is Hong Kong. Although, you know, this, your school, your work is in Sai Kong, so it's still not full on urban. Mm. But when you moved to Hong Kong, did you know there was this kind of surfing? Yeah, uh, I'd had, I researched, I knew it wasn't going to be all, all time, but um, I knew there was surf here and I knew this. I didn't know this break, but I knew there was surf out this way. So, yeah, I'd pretty well researched it. You know, when I started doing international schools, I only applied to about 40 worldwide that I knew would give me access to, to surfing. Wow. So, you said before something um, about the surfing therapy. therapy. The th therapy piece is that it's something... Th 
that you grab towards you and it's playing it's you know when you when i first started going into indonesia i loved how they would talk to you and say you're going to play surfing and uh. and that's their description a really humble or or, or what their eyes are seeing description mm -hmm. and playing is is the therapy piece because adults don't play right but every surfer on this planet has the right to play because mm. what we do is play sure. and play as an educator is defined as something you do when you don't know what the outcome's going to be okay. that's why kids are so good at it right because they're not too worried about yeah. whether things go pear-shaped or not whereas right. us as we get older we stop inviting that unknowingness yeah that surfing has always got an element of unknowingness you don't know if you're going to get Make it slam, have mm -hmm. fun. It, it's playing right. um, in that full sense of the world word, yeah. um, and that's what's the therapy uh -huh. part about it in my mind. I'm all over it. Okay, so when I going back to Sri Lanka, when I was learning how to surf, one of the guys who was there, you know, quite, if, you know, nobody knew, and, and and it's like the night before the, the tsunami. He said, you know, every surfer's got a story of, you know, of the, the wave that was too big, the whatever. And that was, yeah, so my story is, is the tsunami. But so tell us a story about, about the time when you went out on the water and it was humbling. It was too big. It was too, like, is there one or are there many? You know, I remember a place where I lived out in the Pacific on a little island and you had to cross a coral reef, you know, like what's in front of us here, to get out to the waves beyond. And at different tides, you'd paddle across that reef. But if the waves were really big, uh, you, you know, and so it pulls the water back. Yeah. So you'd be paddling across a reef and, a, you know, not giant, not what you visualise as being Hawaiian, but a, a scary-sized wave, like double the size of us standing up sure. would be coming along pull all the water back and then all of a sudden you'd be on your surfboard on dry rocks just wow, sitting waiting. there <laughs> going and could do nothing but smile because right. you know that that thing's going to collapse onto you and try to um t turn you into a piece of <laughs> sea junk or something but you know the thing that most surfers know because everyone lives to tell their story mostly right so mostly yeah. so it's it's it, you know i'm sure you didn't smile in your predicament but no 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 but, but most of my situations have been smiling like oh you idiot this is gonna hurt <laughs> you know and and that and that is almost fun as well right N especially if you can sort of calculate in the moment that you're not going to die right you might get a bit scratched up your right. board's going to be whatever but um yeah it, it's almost fun to be in those sort of strange <laughs> moments so have in have, have you been in hong kong uh, in hong kong i've had one typhoon where it yeah. was it was it was yeah it was way too big for me and it absolutely I, like one wave i was living on lantau it was so big that i was just like okay this sucks i'm done so has that happened where it just you thought this is just not worth it or no don't sort of feel it in hong kong because I, I haven't been you know we where we live here in this park yeah we've got the keys to the kingdom here when the typhoon's on we can drive around to Taiwan. Mm -hmm. no one else can right it's like a private kingdom road sure. around to a place and that has been what we were talking about if you feel like you can't do it but the only can't do it is there is because it's torrential rain and there's about a foot or two of water running across those mm. roads yeah. and it's oblivion down the other side. Right, right. So you're driving around there, again, having those moments, smiling to yourself, going, this is possibly not the, <laughs> not the smartest. smartest move that you've made today. <laughs> but then you keep, the, and the car stalls and then for some reason the, the power steering gap, but then it comes back on again and so you smile and keep going. You're amazing. And then you go around there and then the same time was no, no one was around there but i remember paddling out and it was it, even when it's as big as barley here it doesn't try to s s rip your board shorts off you right in barley at this size here of any typhoon i've been here you get hit by those and it, it's trying to rip your arms and legs off 
But the ones here, even generated by our typhoons, they don't try and rip things off you. Okay. They look a little bit spooky or whatever, but they, yeah. And I think it's because they're just not as top to bottom as what barley is breaking on a shallow reef. Right. But yeah, this same one was going popping through a, a biggish wave and um, a giant light bulb hit me in the head. <laughs> and it was and then it was just one of those moments again. And cause I amused myself. It was a light bulb moment out in this typhoon day. And it's one of the bulbs off the squid boat. Sure. They take yeah. them off, throw them in yeah. the sea, put new ones in. Yeah. And then in the same surf, a table, an upturned table. So yeah, you're surfing with refrigerators and yeah. up to you've know that you've done the yeah. upturned tables, yeah, yeah. giant light bulbs, all kinds of garbage yeah, for sure, for it's, sure. It's that's very funny. strange. That's very funny. Though. <laughs> and that's what's you know that's what's unique about the the, typh the typhoons here. You know, the first few weeks here, I, I went out at Sheko and it was bigger, but I just had one of big foam surfboards somebody lent me, and I, a well-known surfer here come out, and he probably can't even remember, but. We paddled out to the Bombora off the, or the Bommie off the back of, of, of um, Sheko and it was sort of biggish but it was just really lovely how he said, I've got your back, you know, Aww. and this is a person I'd never met before yeah, 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 and we're yeah, out yeah. there and uh, again, it was a very smileable moment sure. and like we weren't doing anything death defying yeah. but we still had that connection and Sweet. trying to catch these strange closing out things at Sheko. It's yeah. all fun. It's all playing. Let's let's be present. You're ta mm. you're talking about these moments where you're in the water and it's happening, and you're just like you're aware that maybe this isn't the smartest thing, but it's also really funny and mm. also really great and perfect. And then here we are sitting on this concrete little pier thing. The tide's out. You can hear the birds, and the birds are going to be in the audio. Uh, we're in the golden hour. The sun is setting. There's no, you know, a few wispy clouds up. There's this golden light on the on the on the hills. Um, we're both kind of in that sweaty 31 degrees Celsius <laughs> kind of temperature. Before coming to record this, you're just like, give me a second. I just have to hop in the stream. So you hop into the stream, then you come back out, and then we sit down. And it, it, this is a perfect moment. <laughs> Linked with other perfect moments. Yeah. <laughs> if. Like if, yeah, it is. Because like, that's a, that's a, the podcast is this idea that every day, if life is a gift, how do we, we make the most of every second? And at the moment, like I'm looking at a, a crab, like a fiddler <laughs> crab over there with this big sort of colorful one cr claw, and and I'm just sitting next to you talking about surfing. I'm just like, this is pretty amazing. Yeah, this, <laughs> this, this is this is. <laughs> Almost as good therapy as what surfing is. Itself. I guess. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. It is. It's good for the soul. But you, we've engineered this moment though, to yeah. a degree. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's crazy. We've been strategic about it. And, there you go. And um, that's how. You, yeah. It's up to us to try and link them to a degree. Yeah. You can't manufacture no. them. Sure. But you can. They can't be contrived. Well, you live out here. We're, yeah. We're contrived people. <laughs> we're yeah. Contriving people. Yeah. I guess. I guess. Um, because. Yeah, we can do this every evening if we so wish. Sure, that's a good point. Yeah, I think I think a recurring theme that you know about you that I know is that you you always talk about how you engineer. So that means you you build, you manufacture, you, ma you design, you manufacture, you create, you you assemble uh, the ingredients you need around surfing. Yeah, you putting thought into it um, every s bit of a swim is for that next paddle when you've got to sort of fight for waves off a 13 year old teenager in <laughs> Australia everything yeah, is feeding back to it um, you know the skateboard riding is feeding back to or replacing surfing right, right, when, right. like today we could be out riding the skateboard down the hills and doing sure. turns and having that same feeling so it's yeah, I, I it's living a surfing life. I often people go, "Oh, there's no surf in Hong Kong," but um, I always say, "Yeah, yeah, I'm having one of the best surf sections of my surfing life that, oh, I've, wow. had, that I've had." Mm -hmm. And people, and you know, I, I sent you one of the photos we're not even up to, but people in Australia will go, "Yeah, it's like they d don't believe you," which yeah. is which is even better. Yeah, you know, because they're 
send me a picture and one of the other pictures you might call that's the sort of picture I'll send back to them right. because they want photographic proof, proof yeah, of yeah. this surfing <laughs> life but they're not getting that um, they have to get or well, they can't get on a plane they'd have to like swim over at the moment but yeah right. people need to put be strategic about putting themselves into the same position and right okay well let's use that as a segue to the next photo because mm. why not So is life really a gift? Really? Can you make every second count? That's the whole point of the podcast. So if you like what you've seen and you're inspired, because that really is my mission, then please give it a like, subscribe, and share. Shooting it raw? Yes. Shooting it raw.